Girlfriends just don't know when to quit. She kept on nagging and complaining, but that wasn't enough. So she started yelling and pushing, and that wasn't enough. So I threw her against the door. Her head hit the handle. She had been furious before I pushed her. Now she lay on the ground whimpering, tears streaming down her cheeks. And all I could think was that couldn't have hurt. I barely pushed her. She barely hit the door, and I kept yelling at her, be a man, just be a man. Don't let the pain bother you. Just block the pain out. Forget it ever happened. That's how I did it. My dad used to hold me down while he twisted my arm back. The pain would be piercing. He would keep twisting until it almost break. And he would say, that doesn't hurt. Quit complaining. Be a man. So I learned to block the pain out. I would hold the rage in, let myself suffer quietly, toughen myself up so I could be a man. In elementary school, I used to beat my friends up. I remember I had two best friends and I hurt them both. It got so bad that my friend's mom came to me crying. Said, she said, quit teasing my son and hurting him. But he was just so weak and it was almost too easy. It's as if I felt a duty to toughen him up, to make him stronger. But he only broke down. He only got weaker. We were in the second grade. When I became a freshman in high school, I got in the first big fight of the year. At lunch, he approached me on the street, walking towards me aggressively, ready to fight. I didn't think, I just did what I knew. I took him down, I had him pinned, choking him, getting ready to rub his face against the concrete. When I was suddenly pulled back, and while I was being held, he punched me repeatedly in the face. I tried to kick him, because my arms were constrained, but I missed, he hit me again in the nose. I could feel the blood gushing from my eye. At the hospital, they bent the cartilage back into place. My face was swollen up like an orange, and my eye was black and cut open. My dad glared at me, as if I was the most pathetic person he had ever seen. He kept saying, how can you lose? Didn't I tell you never to lose? Never let someone get back up. All I could think was how I had failed. How had I become so weak? I would never lose a fight again, no matter what it took. From then on, I never fought fair. It started with baseball bats, then went to knives. I always carried a knife, and then my friends started carrying guns. I never preferred guns. I couldn't control my temper, and I love to squeeze the trigger and watch things explode. So I stuck with knives and bats. I like to feel myself crushing things, breaking things, hurting the people that had hurt me, watching people suffer. Now they could suffer like me. And over the years, I became numb. I blocked out the pain, and I stopped feeling joy. I stopped being happy, and I just used drugs. Horrible things happened. My friend stabbed someone in the back during a methamphetamine rage. Another time, my friend smashed someone's head against the curb. And there were those that were practically beat to death with baseball bats, and others who were tied up at gunpoint while they pissed their pants. There were those that threatened to kill me as I begged them on my knees not to crush my face in. I kept thinking about my friend when he got his teeth smashed through his front upper lip when my bro was thrown through a glass door, and when my friend had died. I couldn't stand the numbness. I needed to feel something. For all the horrible things I had done, for all the people I hurt, I would take my fist and hit my own jaw. I would headbutt the wall. I would punch my legs and smash chairs, anything to feel the pain. I just wanted to feel again. One time, 
I punched myself in the face and gave myself a black eye. When I went to work the next day, they asked me what had happened. I told them I fell down. I covered for myself. How could anyone understand? How could the abuser be me? I told her to leave me alone. Get away. I cannot control my rage. And the next time you slap me in the face, I could break your arm. The next time you grab my shirt and pull me back in the room, I could smash your face against the door. The next time you tell me I'm a worthless piece of shit, I could break your neck. Walk away. Leave the room. Run as far away as possible. Just stop hurting people. How had I become so evil. I finally got to the point where I had to choose to let my hatred die because I couldn't stand it anymore. It was time to break the cycle, to stop the alcohol abuse, to stop the violence of my father and the violence of my father's father, of all the men in my family who had killed in the name of honor. It was time to break the silence, to speak the truth about the abuse, to take responsibility for those I hurt to finally be honest about who I wanted to be. It was time to break the cycle so I could not let this legacy continue any longer. And I let it all go. I came clean to those I hurt. I wrote down a list of everyone I had fucked over, all the people I had robbed, beaten, or lied to. And I read this list to my dad, hundreds of things I had done. And I asked them how I became so violent. Where did I learn this violence? I wanted my dad to acknowledge his role. Instead, he told me I was born evil. And if I wasn't his son, he would have had nothing to do with me. So I reached out to other men. And I let myself finally cry. The memories that haunted me, they ran down my cheeks. I spoke the disturbing thoughts out loud until there was nothing more to tell. Then I began to listen. And I heard their stories. I listened to women talking about being abused and raped. I listened to other men talk about being molested and beaten. I listened to the pain in their stories. I saw through my own hatred. I could see myself in others. The first time I hugged my dad in my adult life, he almost cried. He told me that he had never, never hugged his dad. And he didn't think he would ever hug me again. I hugged him harder and I said I loved him. I looked into his eyes and told him that I was always going to be his son. He said he couldn't believe I was his son. It is time for men to tell their stories, for men to tell the truth about being men and begin the healing process because there is no need for this pain and this legacy must not continue. How can I judge someone for something I've done myself, lost in the confusion of drugs, playing out the trauma of past abuse, using violence to survive in a cruel world, lashing out, a wo out at a world just to be seen. So I've offered myself in service to other men I am a witness to the pain of these men. I find respect for even the most horrific abuser and redemption for the most awful deeds. I am my brother and he is me. There is nothing to fear. Let the truth of our stories free us from the bondage of our suffering so that we may bask in the glory of our love and celebrate the day men learn to love themselves and love each other. The question remains, can we learn to love ourselves? Mm -hmm. <laughs>